Pleasant morning to everyone. Amen. And happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. God has been good to us. Amen. 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 I want to say welcome to those of us who are here. It's a blessing and also a privilege to be in this place of worship. Amen. Uh, it's a very intriguing story, would you say? Amen. A very uh, amazing story. Uh, before we get into our discussion, I invite us to bow our heads and close our eyes as we look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before you throne of grace. At this hour, we give you thanks for being so good to us. As we open your words, we are saying like the psalmist David, open our minds. Let us behold your wondrous truths. Send your Holy Spirit that your truths may be riveted into every fiber of our lives. May it elicit from us a response to be drawn closer to you. I ask, O Lord, that you will speak to me, through me, and for me. And we will be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. May we learn something that will draw us closer to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I turn your attention to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. We're looking at verses 23 and 24. For those of you who love titles, I have a title of the message, Hope, Going Home. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken, talking to Adam. So he drove out the map and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, as angels, with a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Adam and Eve was blessed and they were privileged to be in this beautiful Edenic home. Amen. Special home that God had provided for them. And they were commissioned to eat of every tree of the garden that God had provided. <coughs> in the which there was a tree bearing seed. He said to them, to you it shall be for me. And God is the God of opportunity, amen? The God of variety. And I'm sure that they have numerous trees that they can choose from. Of all the trees of the garden. And, and he reserved one for himself. They must have been a happy couple, what do you say? God always reserves something for himself, amen? But he gives us opportunities. They decided to switch their allegiance from God to another. And they were driven out. The Bible says they were, they were put out, they were evicted from this beautiful Edenic home. Now this is not a, this is not a happy um, scenario. This is a sad commentary on the, on the part of Adam and Eve. No one, no one likes to be driven out from home, what is it? Home, sweet home. We enjoy being home, amen? And to be out of that beautiful Edenic home, uh, they, they were being um, penance or punished because of their own choosing. It was not God's intent that they should leave the garden. Because home has memories with it. Home is connected to memories. I think about Adam and uh, the life that he now had to, uh, to deal with, he had to till the ground. And in Genesis um, 3 and verse 18, the Bible says that thorns and thistles shall bring forth. 
This is your new home. You're going to have to sweat by your brawl and another for all the to bring forth abundant enough to sustain your life. You're going to have to work this all, amen? Hard life. I think about Abraham when he was called to, to leave his home. And Abraham was a wealthy man, extremely wealthy. And he lived in all the colleagues. And uh, Bible scholars um, tell us that back in those days they had toilets that flush. <laughs> Amen. That's one of the comforts in life. We had grown, we had no toilets <laughs> that flush. As a matter of fact, I grew up without electricity. And we received electricity when I was a teenager. And uh, our lights was a uh, Bottle with some kerosene, and you put a you put a piece of cloth, and that was a wick, and you had to light it to get light. And we had this lamp that, that is, and the shade was home sweet home. Anybody remember that? Yes. Home sweet home. Home was a good place, despite the inconveniences and the uh, certain necessities in life. Home is home. Amen. And uh, when Abraham was called to leave home, not knowing where he went, where he was going. That, that's, if you know the reason, you know where you're going, that makes it a whole lot easier, amen? He had to leave his pleasure home and get a big Pathfinder tent and go to the desert. And God said, I will show you where you're going. The time came when he had two boys, Isaac and Ishmael. And Abraham was getting old and uh, he wanted to get a wife for his son Isaac. And he called his most trusted servant, Eliezer. And he gave him a very important charge. And he said to him, I don't want you to take a wife from my son Isaac among the Canaanites where I now dwell. I want you to go back home, amen, to my people, to my country, and find a wife for my son. There is something about hope. There is something amazing about hope. And you know the story. Elias asked for a sign from the Lord and then he met Rebecca. And she was, the Bible says, she was very fair to look upon. Not only that, she was very uh, hardworking. Amen. Not only did God answer her prayer, but um, she drew water not just for him, but for all the camels. And if you know how camels drink, <laughs> That must have been uh, a tremendous task, but she did it very pleasant. Amen. And she was rewarded for her kindness. And she, she came back, she got married to Isaac. And Isaac um, had two sons. Amen. Mm -hmm. What were the names? Jacob and Jacob. Esau. And as time went on, the Bible says that the father loved Esau as he was a wild man. He loved to be the fields, <coughs> but his mother loved Jacob. He was a homo. <laughs> he was a, he was like a family pet. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Now, he, if you talk about family feud. This is a real family feud. <coughs> you read the story. And Jacob means um, deceiver, supplanter, deception. Because he listened to his mama. Everything mama told him, he followed. And he deceived his brother. The first time Esau allowed himself to be deceived, 
because he will not die if he miss one meal. That's part of beans. He sold his birthright. Mm. And the birthright was a very important privilege. He received twice the blessing, amen? amen. Twice the portion. And he gave it up. He could have gone to his father's tent, just a short journey, and he would find a good meal. <laughs> but, but, but Jacob was very deceptive. God will have fulfilled his promise regardless, amen? amen? Wait on the Lord. So he had to leave home. And his mother said, go to Laban. But the Lord was with Jacob. Amen? And, uh, and Laban changed his wage ten times. Both of them were crooks. But Jacob learned the way how to all smart labor. And God blessed him tremendously. He had two wives. And then, then he decided, God said, it is time to go back home. Amen. Amen. The place where you came from. There always comes a point in time when you're going to go back home. And uh, I know of friends who have migrated to England, to this country, and when they have worked two or three jobs all their life, they retire with their savings, and they go back to Jamaica. They go back to Trinidad. They go back to the islands, or wherever they came from. <laughs> because there's a longing for homeland. I remember when I just came to this country, I miss home. I miss the food. I miss the mangoes. Amen. <laughs> you can talk about the Julie mango and the long mango and, and the doodles and the spice mango. Just thinking about it makes you wish that you were there. I mean, we just climb the trees. We don't trim the trees in the air. Just climb the trees. We won't, we won't take the ones that fall on the ground. We just pick them as they just. You just touch them and they're in your hand. And you just eat your belly full. Mangoes. And you can enjoy your plums and your peaches and your pears, but mangoes, it's just amazing. The juice just comes on your hand. Amen? Amen. Amen. Longing for hope. And I miss the food. When I came to this country, I heard about haystacks. And I was wondering, is that some kind of hay that is edible? Back in the island, you know, we don't have haystacks. We got rice and beans. Amen? Amen. And ackee and saltfish and dumplings. Oh, yeah. And yucca and, and green bananas. Something that will make you very hard. That you can stand up. You don't have to eat from a bar. And you don't feel hungry every 10 minutes. Amen? Amen. There's a longing for home. <laughs> want to go back home. Now, now, not everybody that's talking about home is going to make it home. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we talk about heaven being a home. The hymn writer said, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. Can't feel at home. Can't feel at home in this world anymore. anymore. <laughs> Do you know how many individuals believe that they're going to be in that land, bright and fair, in the holy city, New Jerusalem? And they believe that Jesus would come in their day and their lifetime. Do you believe that? I believe that Jesus will come in my lifetime. Amen. But there are thousands of individuals who have believed that, but they are sleeping in the grave. Amen. Christ had not come. Many believe that Jesus will come in their day and their time. But they didn't live to see that in virgin glory. And Jesus will come with power. And all the holy angels with him. But they have gone to another home. And 
by the way, that's hope for some of us. Amen. Yeah. That's hope for the majority who have died for Adam at this point in time. The Bible says that's hope. That we serve a God who loves us. Amen. Amen. With an amazing, amazing love. Hope. What is it? I turn your attention to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. What book did I say? Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Reading from verse 1. Solomon wrote this when he returned back to the Lord. <laughs> he was known as the preacher, the wise man Solomon. And he began by saying, Remember now that created in the days of thy youth. Now one, 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 one Bible scholar reads it like this. He said, if you read it like this, you think that it's talking only about the young folks. But he says, remember thy creator before you get any older. Now if you read it like that, then it's not talking, only talking about the young folks, it's talking about everybody, amen? amen? And that makes good sense. Remember now thy creator before you get any older. So this passage of scripture is relevant for us right now. Amen. Because as soon as we are born, we begin an inexorable march toward the grave. As soon as we are born, we begin to die. Mm -hmm. And here Solomon paints a picture of dotage and old age. He paints a picture of senility. He paints a picture where we are losing our minds. He paints a picture to wake us up to the realization of the time in which we are living. And he said, consider the God who created you before you get any older. He's waking us up. Remember now I created the days of the youth while the evil days come not. And he mentioned some things that is disturbing. That is the reality that every one of us face sooner or later in life. And this is what he called the evil days. <laughs> now the years you and I, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not dark, nor the clouds return after the rain. He paints a picture that when we begin to lose our vision, <laughs> so, so we are unable to, like Abraham, there came a point in time when he, he got to lose vision. Like Jacob. We are getting old. In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, he's talking about the legs, the knees begins to buckle. You, you can't stand straight anymore. And the strong men bow themselves or back against the bear. He's talking about all of us, amen. amen. We, we were getting there. We are going towards the grave. And those of us who are getting there, we are wearing out. Many of us won't get there. But those of us who are getting there, we are wearing out. Amen. There's nothing in this life that is of a lasting, everything is of a temporal existence. Amen. Nothing lasts. Everything is limited. It's only for a time. It will pass away. Get used to it. Amen. Amen. When I was young, I never thought I'd, be, I'd get old. When I hear about <laughs> folks in the 50s, I say, man, they're old, old people. <laughs> I never thought, ah, no, no. They said that it's, it's the hardest to make the first half. The struggle is making the first half. To make the second half, you just glide. <laughs> It's the easiest part. 
because of the challenges in life. So he paints a picture. The grinder sees the teeth begin to drop out. But now we have artificial teeth. And those that look out the window be darkened. The, the beautiful vision, the 2020 vision, we begin to lose it. The door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. The places that we used to frequent, we can't visit them anymore because the doors are shut to us. It's open to someone else. But the things that we desire, the things that we spend time after, our energy and our effort, the time will come when our desire for these things will fail us. The fancy cars and the nice house and uh, the, the decent jobs, the time will come when these things, these things in life, we will have no desire for them. They will fail us. And he shall rise up on the voice of the bird. You get up early in the morning, amen? <laughs> And the daughters of music shall be brought low. Those beautiful voices, Donovan. Oh, the alto and the soprano. The beautiful voices. But one day we begin to stutter. We lose it. And when they shall be afraid of that which is high, he is scared for everything. Fear shall be in the way. And the almond tree shall flourish. In the Middle East, at the springtime of the year, the almond tree turns white, as though it's covered with snow. It's talking about the hair turning gray. Some of us are losing it altogether. <laughs> and the grasshopper shall be a burden. You, you, you are disturbed by the slightest noise. The grasshopper shall be a burden. And desire shall fail because man goeth to his long hope. Solomon says, that's hope. Whether you like it or not, God said to Adam, and to dust, you're going back from whence you was taken, amen? amen? Nothing lasts in this life. So don't think that anything is of a permanent existence. And Solomon calls it the evil day. Verse 7 says, Then shall the dust return unto the earth as it was, and the spirit return unto God who gave it. We cease to exist. We exist because of the breath of life that comes from God, that life gives its spark, plus the body, the dust of the God, equals a living soul. Amen. Man became a living soul. So when the, the, the life given spark, the breath of life goes back to God, all that remains is the dust, the body, goes back to the ground. But we look forward for a better place, amen? amen. If this is all that life had to offer, it would have been a miserable life. And this is the picture that Solomon paints. He said, the evil days. Amen. It's a sad thing when you see children, babies are being born before because of the habits of the parents. Some have been druggies. So the children, the innocent children, suffer the consequences. My neighbor, she, she takes care of these. She adopts these individuals. And... Uh, those who have, uh, they don't have it all together. Some of the kids can't speak because of what the parents did. And they're slow. But, but if, if, they, if they get good care and attention, some flourish. But if they're neglected, they go down. This is the world in which we live in. And we long for a better hope. Long for a better home. To some homes, we give different titles. To 
some homes we call dysfunctional homes, where the occupants in, in the home is in disarray, contention and strife, confusion and fighting, anything goes but it's still home. Some people love that atmosphere. It's home. In other homes, there is love and friendship, respect, well-mannered, discipline, a homely attitude amongst brothers and sisters, amongst parents and children. And that's home for some. I've been in the prison ministry for many years, and there are guys who have two or three life sentences. They're never going to make it out. They're never going to walk through the doors of the prison and be free. Imagine five and seven hundred years. I, 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 a person being about a judge who, who gives the sentence, knowing that you can't live for that long. It's home for these guys. There are guys who have five and six time offenders, repeated offenders. And when they get out, they just want to do something to get back in. Because it's, it's home. That's the only life that they know. Because they have spent so much of their life, the, the, the most productive times of their life, they have spent it behind bars. They know no other life. So it's home. Their condition. When they get up, when to go to the rec yard, when to go to the gym, when to take a bath, when to go to the meals, to have a meal. Their condition, a regimen. They, they're very obedient, they, they do what they're told to do, but they're not, they can't face the outside life when you have to make your own decisions and pay your own bills. In India, you have, a, you have three meals, and you have a shower, you have a roof over your head. It's not the best comfort, but it's home. It's home for many people. And I've come to the conclusion I would rather die than go to prison because I love my freedom. Amen? Amen. I love to be free. Amen. There's freedom in Christ. Amen? Amen? Not when you're confined. Now, good news for us, all of us are in this world. It's like a prison. We long to be free. Amen? Amen? We are not free. We are confined. We have two masters. We are never really in charge. Either we are being controlled by the Holy Spirit, or we are being controlled by the forces of evil. You and I are never in charge. Amen. Sometimes when we are away from home, every now and again we find ourselves Reflecting or thinking about home, how it used to be. Some of us, or many of us, came from different um, states, and that was home. Amen. You talk about the good old days. Those days are dead and gone. It's not going to be the way it used to be anymore. And to some of us, our minds goes back to special occasions, birthdays where you have invited guests, food and drinks, gifts and relatives, friends and memories of home. To some of us, we live in the past, we think about the past. It's like, it's like a person who is trying to lose weight. I'm not talking about none of us, because none of us say he's trying to lose weight. We look good, amen. <laughs> For those of us who don't look good, we are good looking in Christ. Amen. Amen. You may not be good looking, but you can be looking good in Jesus. Amen. 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 By the way, a smile looks good on every face. Amen. To some of us, home is Thanksgiving time. The food and the turkey and the cranberry juice. And the upper pie. That's home. Amen. Amen. Many, many families say they congregate themselves at 
Thanksgiving. That's one of the high holiday in this country, Thanksgiving time. Yeah. Look forward for hope. Many times I find I found myself laid up in hospital beds and I I ask myself, does the doctors know I would heal better if I be out of this place and find myself home? And I ask myself the question many times, when I'm gonna get out and go home? And you don't you just can't walk out of the hospital, they gotta release you. Amen. When can I go home? When can I eat my own food with taste? I can wear my own clothes without wearing this thing with a slit in the back. <laughs> you know? When can I go home? Wear my own clothes. Where I can be in a better atmosphere. I can get on the outside, walk around the house on the block. <coughs> Where I can be more comfortable. Where I can just sleep in all day. Amen. Where I can keep my home clean like a hospital room, or dirty like a city dog. That's home for me. Where I don't have to do the laundry. College students, those of us who have been to college. You look forward for summer break, spring break, come home, where you don't have to do your own laundry, amen? Where you have a different outfit. You don't have to do the dishes, you don't have to... You can just let, in the college, you can just let the sink pile up the dishes, amen? You don't need to take the garbage out. Just you and the smell of roaches. But that's home. You'll be amazed, but some people live like that. Have you ever met a hoarder? People who just take in stuff. I've been in some of those homes. You can barely find a, a place to walk. Everything is everywhere. The sink is piled up, every room is filled, there's no place, but that's home. They love it there, they enjoy being in that atmosphere. There's a longing for home. Sometimes you go to, to visit on a trip and you, you get tired of eating from cans and bags and from microwaves. You want to be in your own home where you can cook your own food, amen? I'm sure all college students know about Roman meat noodles. <laughs> I remember when Ray and I was up at um, New York for some time working. I did come back occasionally and, and uh, my wife or Susan would call us and say, what are you guys having? Wraps. <laughs> Lots of wraps. <laughs> Lots of wraps. So, so when we tell them we're coming home, they say, well, what do you guys want to have? We make it a wrap. We say, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no wraps. You know the, the, the big tortilla, you fill it with vegetables and whatever we can find, you fill it. When we come home, we don't have to do the laundry. Susan does it. <laughs> Somebody does it. Amen. Yeah. We don't have to cook. We don't have to eat out of cans or fast food, you know, Chipotle or Subway. We have our own food. Some good home cooked meals. That's all. It might be a vacation, but you are longing for hope. To sleep in your own bed. Amen? Amen. To get up when you want. Mm. 
So much about Rome. Home can be either a negative or a positive experience. Home is a place of experience. Some people, when they look at a beautiful house, they say, Oh, what a beautiful home. But to me, that's just a house. Amen. 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 Look at the architecture. <laughs> that's just a house. But I got news for us Jesus turns houses into homes. Amen. 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 I turn your attention to the scripture reading. First Kings, I believe. 13. It's a remarkable story. God loves every single one of us, amen. This is a, a remarkable story about two prophets. And the amazing thing is God spoke to both of them. Both of them. Now Jeroboam was king by the people. They made him king.
and yet he, he said to the prophet of the Lord, pray for me. And God is so merciful. The prophet prayed for him and his hand became as normal. God is truly a merciful God, amen? amen. Be'el means house of God, but then he put idol in God's house. God means exactly what he says, amen? Yeah. God does not play with words, amen? amen? When God says do, he means do. When he says do, no. he means do. Yeah. All this was told what had transpired between this prophet of God and Jeroboam. But there was another prophet, the Bible says, an old prophet. And his sons came and told him, what had happened? And he said, Saddle me and ask that I may go and befriend this prophet of God. I won't go through every detail of this story. And God had told the prophet, when you get to the king and you deliver my message, don't eat or don't drink anything that is offered to you. He was honest when he loved the king. He was faithful that, to that point in time, amen? Yeah. But when he was, God even told him, don't go back the same way you came. Take a different room. But it was told by this old prophet, by his sons, the direction which the man of God went. So he met him, by the way, and he said to him, I'm also a man of God. And he said to the, to the prophet of the Lord, God spoke to me and told me, come to my house and eat and drink. This, this story just baffles me. It's just amazing. And the Bible says, you heard it in the scripture reading that we read, the prophet lied. He lied. He lied like a sailor, <laughs> through his teeth. He was, the Bible says, he was a prophet of the Lord. He was lying. No, 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 no. The man of God, after he filled himself with disobedience, he decided to go home. Amen? Amen. He was heading home. But he didn't make it. Can you imagine the scene? First Peter 5 may be so open vigilant because your adversary has a wrong line. Now this line was not only roaring. He meant business. Amen. A lion met him, by the way, and slew him. Imagine the lion standing by the, the carcass, and the lion didn't even touch the donkey. Both of them were dead. And passerby saw the scene. Went back to the village, and they told the old prophet. And he knew that this was the man of God. Many of us who are talking about heaven and going there. You know, you know what Paul says? The one who wrote 14 books of the New Testament. He was cognizant. He was, he was very sober. Let us never take it for granted that we're going to make it. Let us not have that full assurance. We can only have that in Christ. Amen? Amen. Paul says, lest I should have preached to others, and I myself should be a castaway. So if Paul could say that, how about you and I? Amen. 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 Paul was aware, because friend of mine, we can be walking with the Lord today. Amen. Amen. But the prayers for today will not sustain us for tomorrow. Amen. 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 So you don't have a spiritual high that what you do today is like the Muslims, their good deeds must, must outweigh their bad deeds. That's their philosophy. So if they do more good than bad, they're going to make it. But good deeds will not save anybody, amen? amen. Neither will anybody be saved without doing good deeds. Good deeds is simply a byproduct of having a faith relationship with Jesus, amen? amen? When you have that loving relationship with Christ, you cannot but do good deeds. 
and just showing up who you are. Amen? Amen. Not to be saved because you have salvation. This prophet did not make it home. And the old prophet retrieved the carcass and he gave him a decent burial in his own tomb. And he said to his sons, when I die, place me next to his bones. You know, some folks say, I'm a Christian too. And the argument can be very persuasive. But if God didn't speak to you, Paul says to every man, it's own. Amen? We need to listen to the voice of God. Amen? Amen. You know, I, I think about Christ and when he came down here, he left his home. Amen? Can you imagine what that was like? Leaving the glory, the worship of angels, the seraphims and the cherubims, with all was peace, with all his embodied glory. Can you imagine the splendor? He left and he came down to this dinky, dark place, like a swamp. That's what that Ellen White said when she was in vision. And she begged the angel, Can I stay? Can I stay? Now you gotta go back. But if you are faithful, amen. If you are faithful, you'll be in this place. Amen. But Jesus left all heaven, came down here, and he called it home. He never owned a house, he never had a family or a friend because when he was given over to his enemies, they all ran away from him. Amen. He was alone. He never traveled for more than 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of those things one usually associates with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. The only thing he had was an outer garment. And when he was on the cross, they gambled for the only provision he had in all the world. They gambled for it. He was even led in a borrowed grave to the pity of a friend, Joseph of Arbatia. He was nailed between two things. He said, Foxes are holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Homeless. But over 2,000 years have come and gone, and today he remains the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the kings that ever reigned, all the parliaments that ever sat, all put together, have not affected the life of man on this planet as that one solitary life. Amen. Jesus of Nazareth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's the leader of mankind's progress. And because of him, we can face tomorrow. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 says, Paul says, We shall not all sleep. Amen. The trumpet shall sound. Amen. Amen. The angels shall shout. Jesus is coming again. Amen. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day, man. I'm looking forward to that hope that Abraham looked forward to. Not for a piece of land in Palestine. He had to buy a piece of land to bury Sarah. He, he inherited the land. And he, buried, he was buried in that same plot. But he looked for a heavenly country. Amen. Who's built and and maker whose architect is God himself. Amen. I'm looking forward to that land. Amen. Amen. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, we shall not all sleep it, but we shall all be changed. Amen. 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 In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. Amen. He said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He said, this corruptible must put out in corruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. 
And when this corruption shall have put, this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same. Death is swallowed up in victory for the man. I cannot help myself but think about the allegory. And I'm about to close. That death and the grave made a bargain. Death said to Mr. Grave, as a matter of Grave said to Mr. Death, you kill him? And Grave said, I'm going to hold him. So the time finally came when Jesus died, and Mr. Death ran to the grave and said, I've done my part. Now, oh Mr. Grave, you've got to hold him. And Mr. Grave shot it back, I told him, don't worry. I'm going to hold him, be safe. Over 100 elite Roman soldiers in out here. There's a big storm. There's no way he's going to get out. But that came back Saturday night. I said to Mr. Grave, I heard a rumor that the talk is that he's going to rise again the third day. And Mr. Graves shot it back. I told him, I don't worry. I got him. But early Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. There was a messenger from heaven. Came down, and while he was on his way, when, when he entered this, this solar system, he had to switch on reverse. <laughs> because. Even on reverse, when he landed, there was a mighty earthquake. If he had not switched on reverse, he would have split this earth in two. Yeah. See, God had no problem exposing himself because Jesus was being called back home. Amen? Amen. This world was not home. He accomplished his mission. And he just got up. Death. Then the grave tried to hold him, and Jesus just got up, folded his garments. Amen? Amen. And he just walked out of the tomb in style. Read 1 Corinthians 15. And not only that, he insulted death, and the grave said he insulted both of us. <clears throat> he looked over his shoulder and he said, Oh, death, where is thy stay? Oh, grave, where is that victory? I'm alive, and I'm alive forevermore, amen. amen. And because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow, amen. amen. This world is truly not our home. We are passing through. John says, when Jesus says, let not have me trouble, he believed in God, believed God, say, in my father's house, how many mansions? Jesus is not there laying blocks. Amen. We gotta be fitted for his kingdom. Amen. Character is not something that can be created. Character must be developed. Amen. Amen. Adam had to develop a righteous character. Character for no man cannot be created. God is fitting us for the kingdom. That's why Christ has become. Not because the mansions are not ready, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not, I would have told you. If Jesus is about to come again, amen. amen. I want to be that number friend of mine when the saints go marching in. What a day of rejoicing it's going to be. Can you imagine? You're going to have the tree of life, amen. Being 12 different kind of mangoes. <laughs> Everyone. Oh, what a day that will be. Can you, sit, can you imagine sitting at a welcome table? Can you imagine miles in length? Are we going to have perfect vision? Amen? Yeah. I don't want to miss out. Throughout the sister's age of eternity, there ain't going to be no more sickness, and no more pain, and no more sorrow, no more crying. No more glasses, friend of mine. 
no more false teeth and the back begins to bend and the knees begin to buckle and the hair turns gray and we lose our vision. No more cancer, no more arthritis, eh? no more pain, no more prison, no more death. By his death he destroyed the enemy. Death is the enemy of life. Jesus destroyed death. Amen. Amen. And he's coming again, friend of mine. Amen. I want to be over you. Yes. I want to be that hope. Amen. That Jesus has been ready for you and I. How many of us going to be there? Amen. Believe it, friend of mine. Yeah. We can be there by his grace. Amen. Amen. So let not the devil steal your joy. Whoever does the promises of God, we begin to live the eternal life here and now. When Jesus comes, the simply a transition. Amen. Oh, sweet hope. Stand with me if you believe that you're going to be in that now. As we sing our closing.
thank you, Lord, for your kindness towards us. For the privilege we have of being able to know you, hope to know his life eternal. May our names be retained in the Lamb's Book of Life. Mm -hmm. And use us, O Lord, as instruments in the hands to tell somebody along the way that there is a better place. Yes. That they might embrace the knowledge of Christ before it is eternally too late. Keep us faithful unto you, Lord, and seal our decisions for time and for eternity. As we leave this place, dismiss us, O oh God, with your choicest blessings. Never from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.